Hey, church family. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you enjoy my testimony and my path to freedom. It blesses you and encourages you in some way. Well, I grew up as a church kid. My parents felt it was important for us to be around our church family, and so we were there all the time. All of my early childhood memories were us in, on Mexico trips or Pioneer Club nights or Sunday services. Around middle school, however, uh, like the first day I walked onto the middle school campus, God had graced me with knowing everything about everything, or at least so I thought, because I started acting like a jerk know-it-all. I started treating my parents, my youth pastor, and most of my teachers like junk. And I also decided in all of my infinite wisdom that church wasn't for me. And this is a tip for the parents out there. Kids don't know what they need, so please keep that in mind. My, my sixth and seventh grade year, I put up such a stink about God and going to youth group and church that my parents had to stop trying altogether to make me go to church just to keep peace in the house. And it worked. I didn't have to go to church anymore. I didn't have to go to youth group. And to me, that was fine. I never looked back. It wasn't for me anyways, or at least I thought. That's a bunch of stuck up prudes anyways. I had my friends and I didn't need anything else. And what's funny is from that point on, I still called myself a Christian, just not like one of those crazy Christians, which really meant I had no idea what I was talking about. Time went on and I got into high school and still not even questioning whether I should go to church or not. What's in the past is in the past. Well, in the summer of ninth grade, I got in trouble. I started smoking and drinking and I liked it. It felt right. And the parties or the hangouts felt like the place I belonged. Getting drunk and high numbed feelings I didn't even know I had. And again, I had my friends. What more could I want? It turns out I was an angry and belligerent drunk. I put holes in people's walls. I would steal things from them. I would make people angry just to make people angry. And in a matter of two years, I had pushed a lot of my friends away, or at least people I thought were my friends. And in my junior year, after a few, few choice events, I woke up almost every day feeling like I had no one and I was lost. Well, it turns out that nobody wants to be around an angry person who drinks and argues all the time. Go figure. But I look back now and I realize that drinking was my attempt to numb my heart and the hole I had torn into it. And in reality, it needed to be healed, but nothing I ever did healed it. I spiraled that year and got to a point where I wanted to take my life and I just felt alone. No one wanted to be around me anymore and honestly, I couldn't blame them. Well, one weekend, my brother was throwing a party at my house and I couldn't not be invited to my own house, so of course I was there. And I don't think I did what I did that night because I wanted to die in the moment, but I definitely wanted to stop feeling alone and sad all the time. So. I got a fifth of Bacardi and I just started pounding it. And the last thing I remember is me going outside and smoking a bowl with some of my brother's friends. And then nothing. I blacked out. Now, this wasn't the first time I had blacked out, but the next thing I remember, which made it different, is I was being woken up by my dad. And that's never happened before. Which I thought, that's weird. Why is he waking me up so early? After that, my thought was, why am I so cold? Oh, apparently I have no clothes on. And after that, my thought was, why do I hurt all over? And why do I smell throw up? Apparently, at some point in the night, I had passed out in my bathroom and had thrown up all over myself in the room. Well, at four o'clock in the morning, my dad getting up for work noticed my bathroom light was on and he tried knocking but got no response. Let me tell you something. As a dad now, I couldn't imagine the pain and worry I caused my father in that split second. What if he didn't wake up? What if he had drowned in his own throw up? Why isn't he answering? Well, God wasn't done with me yet because I did wake up. I was put in the shower and then I crawled my butt into bed with the worst hangover to date. It was Saturday morning and I woke up to my mom walking into my room and she didn't say much. I think she said something along the lines of, you know you're in trouble, right? Shook my head, because I didn't think it was appropriate to argue there. And then she said something that would change the trajectory of my life forever. She said, and you're going to church on Sunday. So I shook my head, said okay. 
That next morning, I got up for church. I got in the car and I set my expectations too low. These people were lame. They hung around talking about God or something, but in all honesty, I was pretty desperate for life change. I felt like I was in a very low spot, but I wanted to keep my desperation to myself. But God knows our inner workings. God knows what's up. God knows what we need because when I went there, I have never felt more love in my entire life. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says this, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. I didn't understand it in that moment, but I look back now and I realize that every person there was like a mirror displaying God's light and love to me. And you know what? They probably thought they were just doing their job. Welcoming, welcoming back this prodigal, letting me know all the youth group events they had going on, inviting me into their small group with a bunch of guys my age. It was in this moment that I came back to church when I was in my lowest point and at the end of my rope. That God showed me love through the people of my church and I was hooked. I felt like the warmest light was just shown on me through the people around me. And for them, it was probably just a routine Sunday. But God was like, no, these servants are mine are going to reflect my love to this kid so he understands what that hole in his heart is meant for and it's meant for me. And I believe fully that God, like the father in the prodigal story, ran towards me as I was making my way up to the church and was clothing me with righteousness and showering me with love and I got hit like a freight train with his love that day. I probably became the most devoted student at that point. And I wanted nothing more than to be at youth group and keep experiencing that love and grace I felt that day. And here I am, 13, 14 years later, still seeking God and His will for my life, wanting students around me to feel that exact love that I experienced a decade ago. And for the first time in a long time, I felt free. Free from the weight of expectations I didn't even realize I was carrying. I felt free from a deep loneliness that was all too obvious. God's love became real to me. Something else I realized as I rededicated my life to Jesus and made my faith my own, this path to freedom doesn't end until the day we die or Jesus comes to take us home. This was one of the first moments of freedom God led me to. And throughout my constant rededication to Christ, I find myself being freed by His love, grace, and truth over and over and over again. But we could talk about those stories a different day. Because today I want to highlight the people who reflected God's love to me, even if they didn't know they were doing it. I get to live in freedom because God utilized them. And you know what? I truly believe you can do the same. You, you may never know how instrumental a smile, a handshake, and even an invite can be for somebody who is at the lowest point of their life. 2 Corinthians 3, 17-18 says this, For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. The image of Jesus is love and truth and grace. So please, church family, keep reflecting God's glory and God's love like a mirror. Keep reflecting the path to freedom. You never know which angsty, rude, depressed, angry, lonely teen might just turn their life around and, hey, might even become a pastor, all because you reflected God's love. May you be full of the Spirit and wisdom, church family. Have a great day and happy Valentine's Day.